Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just don't even know what to say. I, did, I don't even know what to say. I was going to get on here and, you know, talk about George Zimmerman's lawyers have quit the case because they, because of non-communication, for lack of communication with George Zimmerman. They hadn't heard from him since Sunday. But what's most even even more disturbing is that they also admitted to CNN that George Zimmerman was supposed to be signing a retainer letter because at this point they have not charged, meaning monetarily, they have not charged George Zimmerman any fee. So up to today's date, they owe or George Jimmerman does not owe these lawyers any money. And that um, George Zimmerman's father um, had set up or was supposedly setting up this bank account for his son George for the purposes of, you know, aiding him and paying his bills, eating and that type of thing. Um, but yet again, he has not signed any type of, uh, letter, according to the attorneys, you know, again, he, he, he was supposed to put it in the mail and, uh, they still had not received it. So it's just, ooh, ooh. this is a problem for me because here you are talking about the George Zimmerman lawyer. They have gone on all these talk shows defending him, rightfully so, if they're his defense attorneys, uh, stating that it would all come out in court or if it gets to the court status, that this was self-defense and all of this was going to come out. Now, they don't have any knowledge of where he is. But yet, they're concerned about his mental state. But here's the other thing that's very disturbing that I also learned through watching CNN today. Is that again, he was supposed to, meaning George Zimmer was supposed to be signing this retainer letter. According to his attorneys, George told him that he had signed it, sealed it, put it in the mail. And they were supposed to receive it today, which is Tuesday, April the 10th. But as of today, they had not received this retainer letter. So you, meaning the lawyers, have been posing as his lawyer, so to speak. But y'all were never retained. And not only was it, not only weren't they cont uh, retained as lawyers, they had to find out that they weren't. George Zimmerman's lawyers through the prosecution because the prosecutor office called the lawyers and said hey do you realize that uh, George Zimmerman indicated that you want his counsel and guess what he called our office direct wanting to talk to us privately and of course we instructed him no uh uh you got we won't speak to you unless you have counsel and, and, and the other thing about that, now, this is the other thing I had in the back of my mind. How did he feel so comfortable? You know, that's kind of bold. You, you realize that the whole world, I mean, even the Black Panthers, I think, got a bounty on him or something. And I don't condone that either. I ain't, that, that ain't, you know. But how is it that he's so comfortable? Talk about George Zimmer, but he felt that comfortable that he could call the prosecution office. The very entity that can charge you and arrest you. What well, what's that about? And then you know he's done. I guess gone rogue, and that's his every right to do what he want to. We can even uh, defend ourselves in the court of law if we want to. He has every right to, to seek whomever he want to be his counsel. But but what's up with that? And then he don't went and 
started his own website and, and didn't notify his legal advisors. So and he's just mighty bold that, you know, he 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 wanted to call the prosecution and, and, and just go in and talk to him, you know. But I I'm gonna tell you what really has has, has really just hurt my feelings so much is the simple fact is, you know, these lawyers are still trying to defend George Zimmerman. Still trying to protect him. Stating that, oh, well, you know, George Zimmerman, he can't just walk to our offices anymore because they'll he'll be bombarded by all the press and he can no longer work and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking about neither can Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin can no longer walk down the street. He couldn't. He got gunned down for walking down the street. So don't come on this TV telling us about what George Zimmerman can't do. And like I said, I'm a Christian woman, but I'm human and I have feelings. And I don't wish no bad on George Zimmerman. Let me just say that. For, I really don't. I don't think it was right the way the media put that man's phone number and stuff out there like that. I do not agree with that whatsoever. But, you know, people are saying, well, you know, it was self-defense, self-defense. Well, it wouldn't have had to be self-defense, even if that was the case. Let's just even, let's even go down that avenue. Let's just say if it was self-defense. It wouldn't have had to be self-defense had you not followed him like that uh, police dispatcher told you not to. Wouldn't have been self-defense. And have you? has anybody ever considered how Trayvon Martin felt? Has anybody ever thought about what was this young man's mindset? Here he is, puppy love. I'm on the phone with my girlfriend and got my hoodie on because it's raining outside. And I'm walking down the street. Talking on the phone to my puppy love girlfriend. And here come this joker talking about who is you and what are you doing over here. Okay, first of all, do we not teach our children in, 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 in not to talk to strangers? Do we not tell our children, don't give people your phone number, your address and all. If you don't know them, don't be giving them your name and your address and where you live and all this and all that. Do we not teach our children that? So now all of a sudden there's an exception for George Zimmerman. Trevor Martin didn't have to tell that man nothing. And if, if George Zimmerman was about his business and he was really concerned about his neighborhood, he, he could have, even if he did approach him as a fact, he could have said, look, young man, I'm sorry to approach you. I, you know, there's been a lot of break-ins in this area. I just wanted to make sure that you be careful. Even if he had to play it that way, just to find out if he supposedly was up to no good you know did George Zimmerman let it be known that hey I'm the neighborhood watch and I just want to make sure you, you should be careful out here young man instead of go, coming at him in a negative way and we know he was coming at him in a negative way based on the 911 tapes we all know and should by now have heard about the 911 tapes and his demeanor his mindset at that time but anybody thought about how Trayvon Martin might have felt being bum rushed or being stalked, so to speak, by this George Zimmerman neighborhood watchman? And if I have this to say, and like I said, I don't want anything that bad to happen to George Zimmerman. I, I, I pray now, God, keep him in his right mind. Keep him because I know he's going through something. But I look at it like this. If George Zimmerman, if you feel like you were self-defending yourself, even though you were told not to follow him, let the law, let the people who have legitimacy to pursue someone who looks suspicious, that have the right to pursue, and that's the, the local authorities. But here's my thing to you, George Zimmerman. If you truly believe that you stand flat-footed here today, because we live in the law in the land where it says you're innocent until proven guilty, but based on the circumstances, if you truly believe that you are not guilty of this crime 
and it truly was self-defense, stand flat-footed and face it like a man. Stand flat-footed and allow justice to pursue you just like you pursued Trayvon Martin. Just like you pursued Trayvon Martin to see if he was up to no good and you come to the conclusion based on now, today's circumstances, that he was up to no good. Allow justice to now pursue you so that we can see if what you say was the truth or were you up to no good. Allow justice to find that out. Allow justice to pursue you. And like I said, I don't have a racist bone in my body, but I'm I'm passionate about this because I understand that that child's blood is crying up from the ground. And stuff is just coming out of the wood where things ain't happening. In the in the fashion in the order that it should have happened from way from the beginning, and that's what and what people need to understand is that is my passion is to believe. As a Christian, we stand for righteousness' sake, and what I am saying is, I want to see justice for that family, for that mother, for that father, for those all his relatives and everybody else. We're all connected. I've got two nephews that are his age I have a son who's 25 years old who loves to run and jog and keep his body in physical condition and he wears hoodies he runs in the rain but now we our young men are, are walking around here truly in fear of going outside their houses Having to consciously think about what they've got to wear, and I and I and I understand that sometimes, yeah, there's something. Yeah, we need to clean it up. We need we, we as a race. Yeah, there's something. Yeah, but we're talking about hoodie. Athletes wear them. White folks wear them. Chinese folks that folks wear them. That's why they were made with hoodies. So if it's raining, boom. If it's cold, boom. You can put it over your head. It wasn't made. It wasn't the thought process for of the manufacturer of a hoodie maker. Okay, we're going to specifically make hoodies so if a person wants to commit a crime, they can throw this hoodie over their head. No, it was, a, it was made for the purposes to shelter. And I'm assuming and I'm almost, almost believing that he had that hoodie on for the purposes to protect his head because it was misty rainy outside. And because he had a, a electrical device to his ear. Let's let's think about this, people. In America, we are better than this. I'm sorry. We just are better than this. And and, and so like I said, this child's blood is crying up from the ground because they don't none of this stuff fit. And like I said, it's all gonna come out. It's all gonna come out. Whether you're whether you you believe in God or whether you're not, whatever the situation is, I'm a Christian. I love God and I believe in Him. And just like He said, your sins will find you out. He'll forgive us of our sins. Yes, He will. But guess what? When you commit a sin, it's gonna come to collect its wage. Cause the wages of sin is death, and that means death showing that anything you do is gonna be brought out to the light. On the rooftop for all to see. So whatever your get down is. Whatever your foolishness is. It may be a sin. And the Lord will forgive us. Yes he will. But guess what. That sin is going to come to collect. It's going to say come come come. Well, I'm coming to collect my wage. From, from, from A to Z. It don't matter what it is. You'll be forgiven. But it's got to come collect. And, and like I said, let justice pursue him. Let justice pursue the truth. And like I said, if George Zimmerman, if you feel like you are justified and you feel like what you did was self-defense for whatever reason, stand flat-footed like a man and let and face it, face it. 
If you believe that that's your truth, if you stand in your truth, stand up like a man and face it. That 17 year old child had to stand and face his demise just because he was walking. And if he was pursued, the way the world is now, you don't know who going to jump up at you and bust you and blow your brains out. We all have a, a sense of, of awareness when we're out and about about ourselves. And this child's walking, minding his own business, and he's being pursued. What about his mindset? What kind of fear came over him? He didn't know this man from Adam. Maybe he did feel like he needed to defend himself and, 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 and go on the attack because you're pursuing him. I mean, we all have an element of self-preservation. We all have a level of self-preservation when, when we feel harmed or our six inches of space has been invaded. We all get a little defensive. I mean, come on, let's be for real now. This, What was the mindset of him? But anyway, like I said, I don't want to get all deep. I know I don't got deep. Y'all probably have not never seen me in this light. But like I said, I have, this is, I'm passionate about this kind of stuff. And it's just foolishness. And not only that, as you as you dig deeper into the story and you find out, okay, I went all the way back. And I said, well, let me go back. I, I need to find out what happened from the beginning, from the jump, from the get-go. How did, how, did, how did all this get blown up like this? What happened? I mean, from the very beginning, and I understand the pursuit of his parents. From the very beginning, they, they realized their son had not come home. 24 hours had passed, so they what? They filed a missing report. Did not the police station that they called recognize that, wait a minute, we just had a shooting victim or a man shot this child that fit the same description that this man is calling about his child being missing? Did they not put two and two together? That boy sat in the morgue another two days after it was reported. What? Then on top of that, the 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 investigative officer wanted to charge Zimmerman with manslaughter, but the state attorney the state attorney came in and said, "No, we're not going to charge." And then they also learned that George Zimmerman's father is a retired Supreme Court magistrate. You know, so all this stuff. You know, they're finding out. So, I, I understand why his parents didn't want the local authorities and all them involved. Because they felt it was straight up corruption. Thought, oh, this is just another black boy. You know, this will be swept under the rug, you see. They had no idea that it was going to blow up like this. That's why this joker is in hiding. That's why he's not standing firm in his truth. He got his brother... Coming on Larry King. Very articulate. Seemed like a very articulate and intelligent man his brother is. And come to find out. He hadn't talked to his brother in years. But yet he. All on. The different shows. Medias. Oh well you know. If it if he hadn't uh, defended himself. Uh, he would have been. Uh, laying over there. On the cement. And I probably would have been having to. Uh, feed him soup for the rest of his life because his head was being bashed in to the cement okay anyway like I said I'm going to continue to follow this case this is one of these cases that I'm passionate about the same way I was passionate about this Casey Anthony uh, trial but I didn't even try to do a video on that because I was just so upset. I, I probably would have just freaked, slam out right in front of the camera in front of y'all. So I, I just, there's certain things that I try not to get too deep about because see, it can tear you out the frame. It really can. But anyway, I just wanted to come on right quick and just do a video. And, and, and just to say even this, Lord, I, I let's pray for, of course, I know y'all have been praying for the Trayvon Martin family. I also, I'm going to play for George Zimmerman and his family. Because this is a, this is really serious, y'all. This is really serious. I mean, but we, we, we really, we really do. And, and I am. I'm, I'm truly 
my heart is not that any harm come to joy. That, that ain't even my thing. My thing is, if you are standing in your truth, then stand in it. What, what, what does the psalmist say? When you've done all that you know to do, just stand. So I'm standing for Trayvon Martin. I'm standing that justice be served. I'm standing on the fact that, George, if you standing in your truth, that you feel and truly feel that you did this in self-defense, stand before the world and stand and allow justice to be sought out. And that's all I that's all I'm that's all I'm gonna say. If you pursued Trayvon Martin believing that he was up to no good and you had to defend yourself, then allow justice that same right. Allow justice that same right to pursue you to find out the truth. And anyway, that's my truth. Again, as I always said, and I still mean it, I love each and every one of y'all. Let's keep this thing lifted up in prayer. May the, and, and I'm speaking to myself, may the peace of the Lord be with me and you. God bless you. Bye.